Sometimes I answer a question in the comments section, and then I realize that I need to post the answer in a video, because it's something that everyone needs to know. So, let's do this. Little background first. In both the Quran and the Hadith, we read about Allah rescuing Abraham from a fire. In Surah 21, Abraham gets sick of his countrymen worshipping idols, so one day he sneaks in and smashes all of the idols except the biggest one. And when the idol worshippers ask Abraham what happened, he says that the big idol smashed all of the smaller idols. But the idol worshippers don't believe him because they know that idols don't move. And that was the point Abraham was trying to make. So, they decide to execute him. Here's what happens, starting in verse 68. They said, burn him and help your gods, if you would take action. We, i.e. Allah, said, O fire, be coolness and peace for Abraham. They desired to scheme against him, but we made them the greatest losers. And we delivered him and Lot to the land that we blessed for all peoples. So Allah rescues Abraham from a fire and brings him to the promised land. Keep this in mind for when we trace this story to its source. There's a different version of the story in Surah 37. Abraham mocks the idols, asking them why they don't eat. Then he starts hitting them with his hand, and the idol worshippers rush at him. He condemns them for idolatry, and they say, in verse 97, erect a building for him and cast him into the fire. In the Hadith, we find out how Allah protected Abraham from the fire. Allah protected Abraham by sending animals to try to put out the fire. Muhammad uses this version of the story to explain why he ordered his followers to slaughter lizards. We read in Sahih al-Bukhari, number 3359, Allah's Messenger ordered that house lizards should be killed, and said, it, i.e. the house lizard, blew the fire on Ibrahim, i.e. Abraham. The commentator adds a note for clarification. When Abraham was thrown into the fire, it is said all the animals tried to extinguish the fire except the house lizard, which blew it. So Allah protected Abraham from the fire by having animals try to put it out. Lizards just wouldn't comply with Allah's plan, which is why lizards must be murdered. This brings us to my response. In a recent video, I mentioned that Abraham wasn't delivered from a fire. It never happened. And in the comments section, someone, I thought it was a Muslim, asked, how do you know that Abraham was not thrown into the fire? And here's my response. Because we know where the story came from. The story of God delivering Abraham from a fire was found in the Jewish Talmud, but it was based on a mistranslation of Genesis 15. In Genesis 15, 7, God says to Abraham, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess it. Notice the word Ur in this verse, which is a Babylonian word that means city and was the name of a particular city. In the first century, a Jewish rabbi named Jonathan ben Uziel was translating Genesis 15 into Aramaic, and he came across the word Ur. Jonathan knew Hebrew, but he didn't know Babylonian. So he confused the Babylonian word Ur, which means city, with the Hebrew word Ur, which means fire. This mistake caused him to mistranslate the passage. Instead of saying that God delivered Abraham out of Ur of the Chaldeans, i.e. the ancient city of Ur, which Abraham left to travel to the land God had promised him, Jonathan's mistranslation said that God delivered Abraham out of the fire of the Chaldeans. Later writers expanded on this story of Abraham being miraculously delivered from a fire, but these later versions can all be traced back to a mistranslation of Genesis 15. And this story, which was popular among the Jews of Arabia, ended up in both the Quran and the Hadith, even though it was based on a mistranslation. So we can see that Muhammad's listeners were entirely correct when they accused him, even in the Quran, of repeating ancient fables as revelations from God. See Quran 625, 831, 1624, 4617, 6815, 8313, etc. Hope that helps. God bless you. A moment ago, I said I thought that the question was from a Muslim. I didn't see the follow up until I went back to take a screenshot for this video. Then I read, Acts 17 Apologetics, because of you, Mufassal Islam, and Faraj Ahmed, 
I have come out of Islam and have become agnostic. Now let's tie all of this together. God didn't rescue Abraham from a fire, but God is rescuing Muslims from Islam. Unfortunately, many Muslims have a tendency to call myths facts and to call facts myths. Muslims believe it's a fact that Abraham was delivered from a fire, even though this is a myth based on a mistranslation. Muslims believe it's a myth that their fellow Muslims are being delivered from Islam, even though it's a fact based on observation. Islam is like a fire that destroys reality. How does God rescue Muslims from this fire? Not by sending animals to put it out, but by sending us to refute it. If we want to complete the fire analogy, who would be analogous to the lizards that didn't want Abraham to escape the fire? The obvious candidates here would be modern leftists who shield Islam from criticism, even as it destroys Muslims and non-Muslims, and modern feminists who also shield Islam from criticism, even as it oppresses women. The irony, of course, is that Muhammad ordered his followers to kill lizards, and leftists and feminists who promote Muhammad's teachings would be among the first people killed if jihadis ever got their way. For you leftists and feminists who are watching this video, if you don't care about Muslims and non-Muslims and women enough to confront Islam, you should at least do it to protect all the poor little house lizards that are being slaughtered in the name of Muhammad. You care about lizards, don't you? Then save a lizard by sharing this video.